हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे हरे सो बिफोर वी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग भागवतम I would just like to read something from Garga Samhita. Yesterday we celebrated the most auspicious occasion of Govardhan Puja, and I just like to say something from Garga Samhita in the glorification of Giri Govardhan. So Narad Muni is saying this. He is saying that this is an ancient history, and one who hears this. Story also, all the sins will be destroyed. Ah, uh, just by hearing. So then, Narad Muni says there was a Brahman. His name was Vijay, and he went to Mathura, because Mathura, holy place. He was he went there to do pilgrimage. You know, it's a of course after all, it's the birthplace of the Lord. So one who goes to Mathura means all the sins go away. So this Brahman Vijay went there to remove all his sins. So Narad Muni is telling the story to King of Mithila. So now this Vijay, he did his religious duties there in Mathura. Then he went to Govardhan Hill, and from Govardhan Hill he took one of the stones of Govardhan. And then he was, you know, walking, going from one forest to another. In the Braj Bhumi, in the Braj Dham, there is twelve, twelve uh, forests, right? And then, like that, he gradually he did the Braj Bhumi Bhumi pan, uh, Parikram, and then he left Braj. Then, when he saw after he left Braj, he saw there was a horrible Rakshas in front of him, huge Rakshas, three heads, three chest, six arms, six legs, three hands, huge lips, and a huge nose. Yeah, he had his tongue was very long, like seven hands long tongue, and this monster's hands were in the air, and he was, you know, moving his hands. His hair was like horns. His eyes were red. He had fangs also, long curved fangs, and the monster was approaching Vijay Brahman because monster wanted to eat him now. Anyone would get scared, right? If you saw such a big monster. So what did the Brahman do? He had the Govardhan stone in his hand. With that stone, because he wanted to defend himself, so he struck the monster with this Govardhan shila. The Govardhan shila. What happened suddenly? The monster transformed. His body changed. He transformed into. He had four hands. And then he was lotus. Eye. He had lotus eyes, dark colored skin, yellow garments. Uh, he was uh, no, sorry, not not four hands, two hands, two hands, because he is uh, where he is holding a flute, and then he has a stick, and then he looked beautiful. He was wearing a crown. He had earrings. He had a garland. He looked like Lord Krishna. You know, the, he was a monster, and just by being struck by Govardhan Chilla, now he is looking like Lord Krishna, so beautiful. And then he started bowing down before the Brahman again and again. And then he was telling the Brahmanas that you know you are so kind that you are working for the welfare of others. You have rescued me from this monster's life by your by you because you touched me. I have transformed. I have gotten liberated now. Nobody else would have, could have delivered me, but you delivered me. Brahman said, "But I'm, I'm very astonished. What you're talking? I don't have any simp. I don't have any power. I don't know how to deliver you. You know, but I just touched you with this stone, and you tell me that how come I just touched you with the stone and now you have become liberated? What happened?" So this liberated soul, he said, "That this is Govardhan Hill. It's the king of the mountains." Is the person form of Lord Krishna? Simply by seeing it, one gets the supreme goal of life. Just by seeing Govardhan Hill, one gets the pious result of millions of times greater 
then going to pilgrimage on Mount Gandamadan. There's a Gandamadan mountain. People go there for pilgrimage. So, but just by seeing Govardhan, one gets millions of times more result than going to Gandamadan mountain. And he's saying the same result is get gotten by doing austerity for 5,000 years on Mount Kedar. Uh, you can get that just single moment on Govardhan Hill. Means you take 5,000 years of penances, austerities on Mount Kedar, you can get that same benefit just by one moment if you're there on Govardhan Hill, on Giriraj. And who's staying on one month for Giriraj, he gets million times more result than giving charity of a bhara of gold in the Malaya Hills. Bhara, I'm not sure what is the calculation. A lot of gold. So, and a person who's committed hundreds and hundreds of sins, and if he goes to Mount Mangal, gives gold in charity, he gets a spiritual form like Lord Vishnu. And that same form like Lord Vishnu one can get simply by seeing Govardhan, Govardhan Hill. And so there's no holy place as sacred as Govardhan Hill. Giriraj Govardhan ki jai. So this is coming in Garga Samhita. And Narad Muni is giving this narration, speaking the glories of Giriraj Govardhan. It's so glorious just by seeing, just by seeing Giriraj, one can get liberated. So, okay, we'll continue now with Bhagavatam. So we are on text 14. We have been hearing the life, ideal, life of ideal grihast. Uh, so reading on, Siddhar Yagya Val Shistar Te. Siddhar Yagya Shistar Te. Kalpayet Pritim Atmana. Kalpayet Pritim Atmana. She says what Vam Tejan Pragya. She says what Vam Tejan Pragya. Padavim Mahatam Iyad. Padavim Mahatam Iyad. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Esi Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. An intelligent person should be satisfied with eating prasad, food offered to the Lord or with performing the five different kinds of yajna, Panchashuna. By such activities, one can give up attachment for the body and so-called proprietorship with reference to the body. When one is able to do this, he is firmly fixed in the position of a Mahatma. Nature already has an arrangement to feed us. By the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is an arrangement for eatables for every living entity within the 8,400,000 forms of life. Eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman. So Krishna is providing us. Krishna is maintaining us. Katha Upanishad says that there are so many eternals. Out of all this eternal, there is one eternal who is maintaining all the other eternal. So we are all eternal souls. But who is maintaining us? Lord Krishna is maintaining us. In the material world, in the spiritual world, wherever we may be, Krishna is maintaining. Every living entity has to eat something. And in fact, the necessities for his life have already been provided by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord has provided food for both the elephant and the ant. You know, ant, barely it will need any food. We are speaking relative to the human being. Okay, according to how much human being eats, ant will barely eat anything. And elephant, oh, so much. But Krishna is providing for both. Elephant can eat also. Tons and tons of food is there available. All living beings are living at the cost of the Supreme Lord and therefore one who is intelligent should not very not work very hard for material comforts Rather, one should save his energy for advancing in Krishna consciousness. So here Narad Muni is saying, 
you know, we don't need to worry too much about our material necessities. What is ordained for us, we are going to get that. So, because what happens is we get over-consumed, that we completely neglect our spiritual life. But material necessities, okay, sure, we, we have material necessities, so we work for it. Understanding that we are going to be maintained by the Supreme Lord, but at the same time, we cultivate spiritual knowledge. Cultivate Krishna consciousness. Take out some time every day to hear, to chant. All created things in the sky, in the air, on land and in the sea belong to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And every living being is provided with food. Therefore, one should not be very much anxious about economic development and unnecessarily waste time and energy with the risk of falling down in the cycle of birth and death. Because this 8,400,000 species, by some good fortune now we've got in a human life. So we need to engage in devotional service. Because we don't know the next life, what will we get? Are we going to get animal life? You know, Then in animal body, we can't engage in devotional service. Okay, Devan Rishi Nirbhutani. Devan Rishi Nirbhutani. In this, the, in the translation, they have written that an intelligent person should be satisfied by eating the prasad or mm. by performing the four kind of yagyas. Five. Five kind of yagyas. Five, five kinds of different yagyas. So what are those? Can you just... Like just mention like what they are mentioning here about the five yagyas. In the purport, Prabhupada is not writing anything about this mm -hmm. five yagyas. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay. 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 Yeah. No problem. Yeah. But mm -hmm. eating prasad, yeah, cook food and offer it to the Lord, mm -hmm. and then we can gradually because we are thinking we are the body. Then the more mm -hmm. we eat prasad. We can give up mm -hmm. this bodily concept. We can understand we are not the body, we are the soul. Mm -hmm. The purification happens, right? Purification. Like when we are, eating, we are purified. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What does it mean? What does it mean that we are purified? What does it mean? We become more spiritual and less materialistic. Like mm -hmm. we are keeping Krishna everywhere and seeing that is our. That becomes our aim. Yeah. Then we can purify it means we can gradually give up the attachment to this body. We can give up our false ego. We can mm. understand I'm not this body. We can begin to understand I'm spirit soul. I am mm. servant of Krishna. Mm. Part and okay. parcel of Krishna. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Devan Rishir Nirbhutani. Pitrin Atmanam Anvaham Pitrin Atmanam Anvaham Swa Vrithya Gata Vittena Swa Vrithya Gata Vittena Yajeta Purusham Prithak Yajeta Purusham Prithak Every day one should worship the Supreme Being who is situated in everyone's heart. And on this basis, one should separately worship the demigods, the saintly persons, ordinary human beings, and living entities, one's forefathers, and oneself. In this way, one is able to worship the Supreme Being in the core of everyone's heart. So by worshipping Krishna means we are able to worship everyone else. Here, of course, Narad Muni is saying separately worship demigod, saintly person, ordinary human being, living entity, forefather. But in Kalyug, we don't know how to properly worship. Yeah, we don't know how to properly worship the great personalities. So that's why we are advised, chant Hare Krishna. Like even the five kind of yagya we have mentioned above, what we are advised in Kalyug is to Sankirtan Yagya. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra. And in this way, we will be able to worship everyone. Okay. It gets easier. I'm sorry? It gets easier, right? I mean, it just take Krishna's easier. name. 
yeah. yeah doing it every day one should be doing it every day rather if we just chant krishna every day yeah yeah yarhi atmano dhikara dhya yarhi atmano dhikara dhya sarvasyur yagya sampada sarvasyur yagya sampada vetani kena vidhina vetani kena vidhina agni hotra dina yaje when one is enriched with wealth and knowledge which are under his full control and by means of which he can perform yagya or please the supreme personality of godhead one must perform sacrifices offering oblations to the fire according to the directions of the shastras in this way one should worship the supreme personality of godhead if a grahast or householder is sufficiently educated in vedic knowledge and has become sufficiently rich to offer worship to please the supreme personality of godhead he must perform yagyas as directed by the authorized scriptures bhagavad gita 3.9 clearly says yagya arthat karmano niyatra loko yam karma bandhana everyone may be engaged in his occupational duties but the result of these duties should be offered for sacrifice to satisfy the supreme lord so doing our duty but for satisfaction of krishna then it becomes a yagya any activity which is done to satisfy krishna to satisfy vishnu becomes a yagya if one is fortunate enough to possess transcendental knowledge as well as the money with which to perform sacrifices one must do it according to the directions given in the shastras it is said in shrimad bhagavatam 12th canto 3rd chapter 52 krite ya dhyayato vishnu tretayam yachato makhe dwapare paricharyayam kalau tad dhari kirtanat the entire vedic civilization aims at at satisfy the supreme personality of godhead this was possible in satyuk by meditation upon the supreme lord within the core of one's heart and in tritayug by the performance of costly yagyas the same goal could be achieved in dwapar yug by worship of the lord in the temple and in this age of kali one can achieve the same goal by performing sankirtan yagya therefore one who has education and wealth must use them to satisfy the supreme personality of godhead by helping the sankirtana movement that has already begun the hari krishna movement or krishna consciousness movement all educated and wealthy persons must join this movement since money and education are meant for service to the supreme personality of godhead if money and education are not engaged in the service of the lord these valuable assets must be engaged in the service of maya the education of so called scientists philosophers and poets is now engaged in the service of maya and the wealth of the rich is also engaged in maya service so here narad muni is saying if one is wealthy and one is educated one must use this resources for the pleasure of krishna Uh, so prabha this pointing out that the way to please krishna in this age of kali is through the sankirtana movement by engaging in sankirtan so one must use one's wealth and education uh, for this krishna consciousness movement and that is the proper use of one's resources because if one has these resources and if they are not properly engaged then one is engaging in service of maya so the service of maya however creates a chaotic condition in the world therefore the wealthy man and the educated man should sacrifice their knowledge and opulence by dedicating them for the satisfaction of the supreme lord and joining the sankirtana movement yagya sankirtana prayer yajanti hi sumedasa Bhagavatam says those who are intelligent will will worship Lord Chaitanya by engaging in sankirtan. 
by joining the Sankirtana movement. And here Narad Muni is saying also that one should engage one's wealth and one's education for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. Uh, so, pleasing the Supreme Lord through Sankirtana, supporting the Krishna consciousness movement. And that is the best service that we can do. That is how we can actually satisfy Lord Krishna. We can please Lord Krishna. Any comments, questions? Again, it gets easier, right? We don't need to do any kriyas and yagyas. Right. Mm -hmm. Just just doing the duty, uh, it satisfies Krishna. Doing sankirtan and using our resources, whatever extra we have for satisfaction of Krishna and you know, spreading Krishna consciousness movement. Yeah. Just by doing that, we don't have to do so much of kriya than yagyas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Again, easier. Again, easier. Yeah. Yes, we can see the process is simplified for us in this age of Kali. Very because, simple. Yeah, because Krishna understands that, you know, in this age of Kali, we don't have long lives, we don't have much energy, we are, you know, don't have yeah. much resources. So, whatever we have, we're engaging it in Sankirtan. Support the Sankirtan mm -hmm. movement. Just just aim towards Sankirtan. Give give the Sankirtan mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. Bolo Krishna, Bhajo Krishna, Koro Krishna, Shik Koro Krishna Shiksha. Mm -hmm. Bolo Krishna, chant Krishna's name. Bhajo Krishna, worship Krishna. Baj uh, Koro Krishna Shiksha, follow Krishna's instructions. Nahi Agni Mukato Yam Vai Nahi Agni Mukato Yam Vai Bhagavan Sarvaya Kya Bhok Bhagavan Sarvaya Kya Bhok Ijjeta Havisha Rajan Ijjeta Havisha Rajan Yatha Vipra Mukhe Hote the Supreme Personality of God, Sri Krishna, is the enjoyer of sacrificial offerings. Yet, although his lordship eats the oblations offered in the fire, my dear king, he is still more satisfied when nice food made of grains and ghee is offered to him through the mouths of qualified brahmanas. So, Narad Muni is saying Krishna prefers that we feed the, the devotees. He's more satisfied than offering the oblations in the fire. You know the yagyas, we offer the offerings into the fire. That fire is the mouth of the Lord Vishnu. It's being offered to him. So, but the, the better way to please Krishna is by feeding the devotees, the Vaishnavas. Krishna is more pleased like that. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 3.9, Yagya Arthat Karma no Niyatra, Loko Yam Karma Bandana, all fruitive activities should be performed for sacrifice, which should be directed toward pleasing Krishna. So because what happens is we get into Karma Bandana, we do some activity, and if we are not doing it for pleasure of Krishna, we get karma for it. And we get karma, then, you know, we have to again take more and more lives in this material world to pay back that karma that we are getting. So it becomes action, reaction, action, reaction. And like this, we are in the material world for a long time. But when we do activity for pleasing Krishna, then that activity leads us towards liberation, opens the doors of liberation for us. As stated elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita 529, Bhuktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loke Maheshwaram. He is the Supreme Lord and enjoyer of everything. However, although sacrifice may be offered to please Krishna, the, the, I don't know what's okay, he's more pleased when grains and ghee, instead of being offered in the fire, are prepared as prasad and distributed first to the Brahmanas and then to others. This system pleases Krishna more than anything else. Furthermore, at the present time, there is very little chance to offer sacrifices by pouring oblations of food, grains and ghee into the fire. 
especially in India, there is practically no ghee. For everything that should be done with ghee, people use. Yeah, I'm not sure why the why the the, the the font is jumping here and there. Anyway, people use a certain type of oil preparation. Oil, however, is never recommended for offering and sacrificial fire. So we can see actually there's not enough ghee also. Like recently we had this kind of a thing where, you know, the ghee mixed with all sorts of uh, untouchable things are being is being made right so and yagyas this big big yagyas lots and lots of ghee was needed to put in the ag ag agni now we just do like a token yagya very little ghee but actually before yagyas used to be like huge and would go on for days and years and people would keep on pouring ghee because it was available. Uh, so, in Kalyug, the available quantity of food grains and ghee is gradually diminishing. And people are embarrassed that they cannot produce sufficient ghee and food grains. Under the circumstances, the Shastras enjoin, Yagya Sankirtana Prayer, Yajanti Hi Sumedasa, in this age, those who are intellectual, offer yajna or perform sacrifices through the Sankirtana movement. Everyone should join the Sankirtana movement, offering to the fire of this movement the oblations of his knowledge and riches. So that's why the, the scriptures are recommending this point we can see again and again. that Because some people may say, oh well, before people used to do yajnas, people used to do meditation, so I'm going to do that. But in these verses, we are able to understand that we do not have the proper resources to engage in these big fire yagyas and to engage in meditation. And that's the reason the, the scriptures are recommending us the yagya that we can actually do in this age of Kali is the Sankirtan yagya. Yeah. So join the Sankirtana movement. It's saying that people who are intelligent will worship the Lord by engaging in Sankirtan. So in our Sankirtana movement or Hare Krishna movement, we offer sumptuous prasad to the deity and later distribute the same prasad to the brahmanas, the Vaishnavas, and then to the people in general. Here Narad Muni is saying that Lord is pleased by prasad, uh, by offering to brahmanas. So Krishna Prabhupada is saying every day, Lots of prasad is, boga is offered to the deity. Lots of boga, variety of boga. And then that is distributed to the brahmanas, to the devotees, to anyone who's coming to the temple. Krishna's prasad is offered to the brahmanas and Vaishnavas, and the prasad of the brahmanas and Vaishnavas is offered to the general populace. So Krishna's prasad is called Mahaprasad, right? You know, when you go to Vrindavan, Mayapur also, you can buy this Mahaprasad because whatever has been offered to the deity, then we can buy it as Mahaprasad or we can take it. And what is been first taken by Brahmanas and Vaishnavas becomes Maha Mahaprasad. You know, double mercy because there's Krishna's mercy in there and also the mercy of the devotee is there, the pure devotee, the Vaishnava. So it becomes Maha Mahaprasad. So this kind of sacrifice, the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra and distribution, distribution of prasad is the most perfect and bona fide way of offering sacrifice for the pleasure of Yajna or Vishnu. So Prabhupada is saying that the Hare Krishna movement is very bona fide. The way the offering of prasad is being done, the offering of education, offering of wealth is being used. Everything is being used for the pleasure of Krishna as it is being said in the scriptures. So bonafide, uh, yeah, yeah, bonafide sacrifice. Okay. Any qu comments, questions? Yeah, I agree it so much because I, I didn't know if I've mentioned it to you before we, when I was uh, in my parents' home, we were Arya Samajis, right? And, and my grandfather used to do every month Havan at home 
we used to cook and first we used to offer it in the fire and he knew the he knew the words and he used to chant and we used to be around helping doing the havan and gradually it stopped you know my father didn't know how to do it and that's that's what we've been reading about it gets so complicated many things were not available then what is what is you know supposed to be put in the fire like now we are hearing about the ghee it's getting expensive so probably that time also my father was like oh i don't know where to get this from grandfather used to get and so he felt that oh we don't have everything also he didn't know what to chant uh, you know very well so it stopped but then yeah so it's so true you know i mean just feeding the uh, devotees vaishnavas brahmanas and then having the prasad at the temple it's it's equally beneficial also so keep it simple and just surrender yourself to krishna all is done yeah oh yeah thank you so much for that yes yeah. thank Hare you krishna. so you're practically you, you are practically experiencing what is meant yes 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 i i don't feel the guilt anymore now i used to feel that i i keep remembering that how my grandfather used to do and then i i'm like oh we don't do it anymore now but then i don't feel it anymore after reading this so mm. i'm glad i i got to read this yeah okay hey, thank you yeah. and krishna hari krishna and krishna anyone else wanted to add anything any more comments or questions stop here for today shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shla prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakta vind ki jai hari krishna thank you so much for listening.